anyways see no, what I'm, okay listen uh after the class is done you will be sent a proper homework like you know the, some questions from the topic that has been taught on that particular day and what you are supposed to do is obviously first of all answer that question and then you have to click a picture of it or make a pdf out of it scan it or something and then you send it to the team they'll send it to me okay so that i'll check like how you people are writing like the answers what is your approach and i will also tell you like how much you need to write you know what kind of answer should there be in a two marks question five marks question right you need to know how much to write what is enough what is not at all enough right sometimes what happens students they write just two lines in five marks answer now that is so not enough and obviously the teacher whoever uh, like checks your paper will cut marks now obviously it doesn't mean that you'll write rubbish in the answer rather you write something that is obviously first of all meaningful and usually in the long answer questions there are like it is given from the topic that is actually lengthy okay <clears throat> all right uh, now let us move on to the topic so first what we will discuss about today is like uh, what are the functions and what are the location size and everything about the endocrine gland so we have already seen that pituitary gland, thyroid, pineal, thymus, adrenal, pancreas, testes and ovaries. These are the following endocrine glands. Now, talking about the pituitary gland. Now, pituitary gland, it is a pea-sized gland. The size is pea-sized. And where is it located? So it is located at the base of the brain. Okay. Now. Always remember this one thing. It is very like fascinating to me also that pituitary gland is known as the master gland. Now, why is it known as the master gland? Because this is the gland that would control the secretions of all of the other glands. Okay, like all of the other gland secretions are under the control of the master gland, which is the pituitary gland. Do you people remember hypothalamus? Yes, ma'am. Do you know that hypothalamus is known as master of the master gland? Because pituitary is under the control of the hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus is known as master of the master gland. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Talking about the hormone that is very important uh, for us to remember here is the growth hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland. Now, obviously, as the name suggests, this hormone is responsible for the growth in the human's body. Now, when any hormone, not just from the pituitary, from any gland, when any hormone is secreted much more than needed or when it is secreted much less than it is required, both of these can be harmful to the human. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so we are going to see the case. Now, normally, the growth hormone is responsible for the growth in the human's body. Now, see, as I told you, the secretion which is much more than needed, that is over secretion. And the secretion which is much less than needed is under secretion. And both of this will be harmful to the human being. Okay, so the under secretion of the growth hormone, it will cause dwarfism the human being will not grow properly. He, he or she would be a dwarf, right? Short-heighted person. Yeah. Now, for those that have the over-secretion of growth hormone, over-secretion means release of the growth hormone much more than it is required. Then that will be causing several diseases. Now, what will that be? Now, if the over-secretion is done in the case of children, so, it will lead to gigantism. Now, gigantism is just the opposite of dwarfism. Like how in dwarfism, the human is like far more shorter than normal height. Gigantism is far more like huge, larger than the normal height. Now, if the growth hormone is over secreted in the adult, not the children, in the adult, then that would lead to a disease that is known as acromegaly. Now, acromegaly, like it's not exactly like gigantism, but here what happens that either the hands or the feet, they will grow like twice or thrice the size. Okay, so like some part of the body will grow huge rather than the whole body being huge. 
So now this is for the adult. For the children, gigantism. Okay, or you must remember the variation over here that over secretion, it has two conditions when it is released in children and when it is released in adult. This much is clear? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now let us move on to the second that is thyroid gland. Now, thyroid gland, it is a butterfly shaped gland. Okay, the shape of the thyroid gland is butterfly shaped. Now, where is it located? So, it is located in the throat area. Okay, do you people know trachea? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so it is located like surrounding the trachea. Okay, in the throat area. Now, the hormone which is secreted by the thyroid gland is thyroxine. Now, this thyroxine hormone is very important for the metabolism of the body. The metabolism of the body is regulated with the help of thyroxine hormone. Now, for the proper synthesis of this hormone, that is thyro uh, thyroxine, iodine is very, very important. Do you people know what is the source of iodine in our food? Salt. Salt, correct. The table salt that we have, the salt that is put in our food, that is the greatest source of iodine. Now, just in case the iodine is deficient in our diet. Now, since iodine will be deficient, because of that, thyroxine will be under secreted because it will not be synthesized properly. And when that will happen, it leads to a disease that is known as goiter. You might have seen that there are pictures on the internet of people having a really swollen neck, badly swollen neck. That is goiter. Yes, okay. So this was about thyroid gland. Any doubts? No, ma'am. All right. Now let us talk about pancreas. Now this is the only gland in the whole list of glands that we are studying. Pancreas is the only gland is, is known as a mixed gland. Why? Because it behaves like an endocrine gland also and it behaves like an exocrine gland. So endocrine gland, exocrine gland, both these glands like the pancreas has both the functions. Okay, so we call pancreas as the mixed gland. Now pancreas is a leaf-like gland and where is it located? So it is located behind the stomach and it is an endocrine gland as well as it is an exocrine gland. Now, let us see how it functions like an endocrine and exocrine. Now, as an endocrine gland, because we are uh, interested in the endocrine aspect of it. So, as an endocrine gland, it synthesizes and secretes two hormones. Those hormones are insulin and glucagon. Now, see, in the pancreas, there are two types of cells present. Alpha cells and beta cells. Now, the insulin, the hormone insulin is secreted by the alpha cells of the pancreas, okay? Whereas, the glucagon is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, the two hormones which is secreted by the pancreas is insulin and glucagon and it is the endocrine function of the pancreas. Now, let us look at uh, what is the function of insulin and glucagon. Now, both of them are in, involved in the glucose metabolism in a body. Okay. So, what happens? That insulin would lower the blood sugar and glucagon would increase the blood sugar. Okay. So, these hormones, they act against each other and this property is known as antagonistically. Okay, meaning they like if insulin will act, then the blood sugar will be decreased. If glucagon will act, then the blood sugar will be increased. So both of their functions are different. They are needed at different times and they are secreted by the pancreas, which is the common area. Now, inside the pancreas, the alpha cells would be secreting and synthesizing insulin and the beta cells would be there for the glucagon. This much is clear? The endocrine function yes, of... Uh, yeah, okay. Now, talking about as an exocrine gland, what is the property of exocrine gland? Yes, 
Hmm? It secretes enzymes. Yeah, that is right. But what is the, um, you can say, mode of secretion? How do you define hmm. any exocrine gland? Hmm? Mom, can you repeat the question? The question is, how will you define the function of an exocrine gland? I mean, what does it do? Uh, it secretes... Hmm. It secretes um, enzymes. enzymes. That is right. What is the ducts? Hmm, true, the ducts. So it is a ducted gland. So now, pancreas, as an exocrine gland, it secretes enzymes which are helpful in the digestion process. You might have, uh, you might remember it from life processes. It is there, right? The secretions from the pancreas, they are mm -hmm. responsible for the digestion of protein, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acid. And all of these components are present in our food. And obviously, for us to derive nutrition, we need to digest it. And how is it digested or how is it broken down? So it is broken down with the help of the enzymes that are secreted by the pancreas acting like an exocrine gland. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, the most important disease that is related to the endocrine aspect of the pancreas is when insulin will be under secreted. Insufficient insulin will cause diabetes. Because when insulin will not be there, then the blood sugar will not be lowered and it will be constantly high. And that is the symptom or you can say the thing that leads to the diabetes. What is? Do you people know anyone who's uh, diabetes? Like maybe in your relatives? Yes, ma'am. You know? Yes, ma'am. You might have seen them, if they're like, if you know them, so you might have seen them, like they take injections of insulin. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yeah, because their body is not able to produce the insulin normally because they have, now they have diabetes. So, reg on a regular interval, they have to take the insulin shots right after the like for the digestion and the like so not actually not digestion but the lowering of the blood sugar because the food we eat like certain food substances that are rich in carbohydrates they would increase the blood sugar got it so that was pancreas yes. now let's come on to the adrenal gland now uh, whenever you saw picture or anywhere if you saw a kidney you might have noticed that each of the kidney was wearing a crown. Have you noticed this? Yes, In any diagram or something? Yes, ma'am. Brown color. Yeah, the brown color part. Now, this crown is nothing but the adrenal gland. Okay. And it is present over both the kidneys. So, now, adrenal glands, they occur in pairs and they are present above each kidney. But a great thing to know about adrenal gland is that it decreases in size with age. Slowly, slowly, as the human being progresses towards the older age, the adrenal gland would decrease in size. Now, the adrenal gland is responsible for the production and secretion of the hormone that is known as adrenaline. Now, this hormone is our, you can say, partner in crime or something like that. For example, um. <clears throat> If we see an animal, for example, a snake, okay, we're walking, we're walking, walking, and suddenly we see a snake on the road. Now, if we see something that is so scary, doesn't our body feel a rush of blood supply? Like we feel so tense, we start sweating. And then in that case, if the snake would start coming towards us, what will we do? We'll run as fast as we can, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so that instant boost of energy, that instant response comes because of the release of the hormone that is adrenaline, okay? It helps in the flight and fight response. 
flight and fight response is named or a term for that particular event that takes place. Like whenever something is following us, we have this instinct to run as fast as we can to save our life, right? So that is the flight response. Now, usually yes. what happens is that when people fight, have you ever noticed if you have ever gotten with a, like in a fight, you might have noticed that if somebody hits you, you feel the anger and you're like, I'll hit him twice as hard, him or her, whoever it is, right? So that is the fight response. Okay, so flight and fight response, it happens in our body because of the hormone adrenaline that is secreted by the adrenal gland. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Now, to help in that fight and flight response, the adrenaline, it acts on the heart and it increases the heartbeat. Isn't it? When we feel scared, our heartbeat increases, right? And also, yes, yeah. And also, the adrenaline would increase the supply of oxygen to the muscles. Okay, the supply of oxygen would be increased much more, so that we'll get more and more energy to do more and more physical activity, which may be needed at that point of time. Got it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, talking about the gonads. As I told you, gonads are two, right? Uh, one in the male like one pair in males one pair in females now what are gonads see gonads is the term that is used for the gamete producing organs those organs that produces the gametes what are the gametes it is sperm in the case of male and it is ova in the case of female now we know that the sperm is produced by the testes and the ova is produced by the ovaries now, apart from producing the gametes, the gonads, which is testes and ovaries, they also produce male and female hormones. The testes produce the male hormone, which is known as testosterone. And the ovaries would produce the female hormone, that is estrogen and progesterone. Now, the function, let us see the function. So, the testosterone and the estrogen, it helps in producing the gametes, okay? And apart from that, they are also responsible for the sec secondary sexual character, meaning all those characters that are observed in the male or the female after the age of puberty, like appearance of armpit hair, appearance of moustache in boys, then broadening of the pelvis in the females, all of the menstruation, all of these characters, they are because of the presence of these male and female hormones because these hormones increase quite a lot in the puberty time. Now, the hormone that is progesterone, it is a pregnancy hormone. Very important for the pregnancy as Got it? Yes, ma'am. Now, ma the... The female gamete is can be egg also, or we can we should write ova. You can write egg also, then also it is fine. If you write ova, then also it is fine. If you write ovum, then also it is fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because the meaning is same. So for males, you can write sperms, and for female, you can write ova. You can write ovum, and then you can write egg also, but. You know, if you are talking in biological term, it is better if you write either ova or ova. Okay. And see, ova and ovum are the same thing only. Okay. It means egg only. But one is in singular and one is in plural. Okay. So, this ovum means singular. Whereas, the ova is the plural. Okay. The meaning is same, but just it's singular and plural. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So, are all the endocrine glands clear to you, people? Yes, ma'am. Madiha, what about you? Yes, ma'am. Any doubts? No, ma'am. All right. Now, you people can note down. Also, do you uh, do you have to start from the beginning, like from the types of gland from here? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. We finished till up to the class. Okay. okay. Done now. Done now.
Then um...
डन मैम डन मैम Yes. Any is kidney? acid. It is nucleic. nucleic acid. Okay. But don't write it. Listen, don't write it because you. It's not there for you people. You just write this much only. Okay. Yes,
धन्यवाद